Hi guys, follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I am driving this. This is the BMW 218i and the car comes courtesy of Apex and a big shout out to them. Make sure to check them out in the pinned comment as well as the description and follow them on Instagram. This is the engine of the BMW 218i. It happens to be a small engine which we'll talk about when we're driving the car. There is insulation right there and this is a BMW so yes it felt actually pretty nice to open the hood because the heat was coming. I'm not wearing a jacket, it's cold. The car doesn't look particularly impressive from the front, it kind of looks boring somehow. But from the side, the coupe design of course looks splendid and of course you have the Apex Nürburgring stickering right below the outside rear view mirrors and JRZ suspension on this particular vehicle. So the car is not stock but you know. The Polo is just faster somehow, so more fun. You see, the clearance between the body and the wheels is so less. 225, 40, 18 is the tires. Look at the discs and the brake calipers with, of course, the M logo, which actually improves the braking performance by 0.03%. Just throwing random numbers. Car looks really sleek from the side. And of course, from the rear also, it looks splendid. The spoiler really doesn't help, I believe, but it's a nice carbon fiber finish for sure. Meanwhile, at the rear, you've got this exhaust which is big and stands out. You've got rear parking sensors, but somehow in Europe, people don't need a reverse parking camera. That's kind of missing. Oh my god, this is actually heavy. The boot is not really big as such, but you've got a mat. And below here, we've got the batteries. Well, spare wheel is not needed because the roads are so good here that you're not going to get a puncher for sure. Anyways, I'm just being optimistic here. From the side, I love the design of this BMW car. I love the wheels on this car. But there's a bit of a challenge because this happens to be a four-seater. Getting at the rear is a bit of a problem. You can obviously press this and push it. Space at the rear is very little. You really can't sit in there. And there's no headrest for the center passenger because there's no legroom only for the center passenger. But there's storage space somehow here, which you can see. Meanwhile, there's no storage space there. That's sort of an armrest. And here, there is storage space along with a 12-volt charging socket, I believe, but no legroom. This car is made for two adults and obviously a few animals or soft toys. There is storage space behind the front seat back, which means that it's sort of a magazine holder. Anyways, under thigh support is not an issue. You can pull and push this to increase the under thigh support. Let me push the seat all the way behind because you need that amount of space. Oh God, look at this. This is like a cupboard. So many compartments. And I love the fact about coupes is that frameless doors for the win always. In fact, it looks so sleek and sexy every time you see it with the windows down. But you can hear a lot of loud noise I'm um, from the behind because we are at the Nürburgring, so plenty of sound coming out from there. Seats have great bolstering, you can see that there's good amount of support. Of course, under thigh support isn't an issue and once you get inside, it's really very low, so you step down. Now, this has three pedals, it is a manual and not much controls here. Meanwhile, the handle is finished in piano black, which is nice. Obviously, typical BMW affair of having the headlight controls here. And the cluster feels a little basic, but I like this cluster compared to what is the latest cluster. Okay, it's showing an error message right there. Meanwhile, the iDrive controller is really easy to use, very slick as well. And you get the typical BMW affair of a lot of things. Screen is a little small, auto naming inside your view mirror. No sunroof somehow on the cars here. I don't think they need them <laughs> because there's no sun coming out. Glove box is actually large enough. I love the piano black finish, which actually looks pretty nice. This seems a little busy. These are actually the controls for the CD changer and obviously for the mode for the audio system and this is for the air conditioning control twin cup holders storage space for your mobile phone and there's a 12 volt charging socket as well now this is actually the mode selector and this is the traction control button which could be murder mode but not in this BMW physical handbrake for the win that's the most important thing about this car the storage space along with a USB as well as an aux plug so the steering position is actually quite nice actually the whole driving position is nice under thigh support is great as well and everything falls in place right into your hand these are the controls for the indicators these are the controls for the wipers the wipers obviously work really well but i'm not going to use them and dirty the car at the moment but you know honestly how is this bmw to drive on the track well it doesn't have much power but certainly it has great handling there's a mirror there's a light the usual BMW affair, the usual things you would expect in a BMW car, all of that is available and the seat position is so nice. In fact, I've got good amount of headroom. Thankfully, you know, the seat bolstering is nice and the thigh support isn't an issue. So overall, this is a car which is ergonomically well managed and well planned for the track. Let's get going right away. All right, off we go into first gear. car doesn't feel as fast though 
because this is the 218i powered by a 1.5 liter three cylinder engine producing 134 horsepower in stock now this one has a bigger intercooler and it has been modified now it produces almost 200 horsepower so yeah the punch is there nice and hard and this being a rear wheel drive is definitely more fun now this car is running on modified suspension that is the reason why you know it feels super duper stiff somehow and that stiffness can be felt every given moment somehow here we are into second gear and the steering is just splendid ah there is some amount of lag I, I believe that is because of the bigger intercooler but once it spools up it gets going ahead with a lot of enthusiasm somehow you are taking this corner and as you can see the balance is really very nice and that is a Renault Megane I believe revs all the way to 6500 rpm more than 6500 rpm actually and hitting the rev limit here into third gear so the 218i is not available in india but the 2 series is going to be launched mostly and once that is available probably bmw might give us the 218 as well but then you know very underwhelming engine as such however the handling is the real usb the steering is beautifully fluid it really darts into corners and because of the stiffer suspension it maintains its line beautifully well the steering is so good on this car it's absolutely stellar the way the steering actually responds on this vehicle love the way the whole balance is the weight distribution and the brakes also are modified actually they are from the m2 so running into the rear rev limit almost every given moment because you know <laughs> This track is so big and the car doesn't have that overwhelming performance but this is a great rear wheel drive car to actually get going on the Nürburgring for the very first time and um, me not knowing exactly where to go I actually break when I see a uh, uphill anyways here we are into second gear and there we have already hit the rev limit I'm gonna get into third balance is really something worth applauding about BMW cars and we have the M2 in India which is obviously level 4x of what we are driving right now in terms of performance in terms of balance in spite of this car being a rear wheel drive okay we have a yellow flag ahead which means we need to slow down a bit here we are so how does the yellow flag work? Uh, 50 kilometers an hour hazard, hazard lights on yes are we good to go? yes alright here we get going quite a traffic jam ah that gd3 so here we are pulling hard and fast and you know i love how easy it is to drive you don't have to worry about stepping the tail out usually that is not the case with bmw zero wheel drive car especially you get hard on the throttle the performance is just very underwhelming i would say and there's a full vw group squad which is going as an audi as well that is the S4 look at the way it's going my goodness yeah <laughs> he is on full throttle for sure so the polo was obviously louder somehow this one isn't that loud I believe it's more to do with the insulation of this car that you can't really hear much on the inside but in terms of handling characteristics it's just so splendid it's absolutely pinpoint accurate somehow you aim it and it goes that's the beauty of a BMW every given moment okay now I can finally start hearing the engine What is the toughest corner on the ring? <laughs> it can be anything. And why does it say 90 and all those things? Uh, because 70 second uh, exits. 
Okay. So it's officially a speed limit for people uh, who want to get off the track. Okay. So here is the exit and people slow down here and if you come here too fast then you might end up crashing into them. drive the more it can give you not in terms of performance definitely but in terms of the handling characteristics it's absolutely surreal somehow it doesn't rev that fast and this 1.5 liter engine is really not up to mark in terms of you know putting a massive smile on your face but the handling very well covers up for everything and more and you know the pull is nice the brakes are surreal obviously we are running after market brakes here but you know the gearbox is also very slick shifting now this is a manual bmw for the very first time i'm actually driving a manual bmw i've driven so many bmws but never driven a manual the experience of driving a manual bmw is just something else the clutch is on the heavier side somehow but the gear shifts are extremely smooth and uh, you know the cast is very glued extremely sharp extremely agile and the only thing is the right quality is on the stiffer side but this car is never going to be driven outside the nurburgring so well that kind of makes perfect sense here so this is one of the more affordable bmws here the 2 series and uh, the cost i think is around 20000 euros or somewhere around that which is like much cheaper than the entry level bmw which we get in the indian market the only thing is you know it doesn't have the thrust you need that's why you have to keep downshifting that polo which i was driving earlier my goodness that felt so much more punchy obviously because you know <laughs> the dsg would select the gear you would always need here we are in third gear and i have mostly driven in second and third today never got a chance to get into fourth because by the time i decided to get into fourth and shift gears well there was in much space really to do that anyways you see picking up pace slowly 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 not the fastest as such but the balance is absolutely stunning the amount of confidence it inspires the steering is extremely heavy as well and here finally we're going to get into fourth gear and uh, just managed to do 160 kilometers per hour car is really very sure footed but it's been an extreme fun day here driving on the nurburgring this bmw car thank you so much misha for yeah. having me here and uh, you Welcome. know thank you very much thanks a lot and uh, it's been great fun especially i i personally love the polo maybe because <laughs> of the gearbox was super fast with shifts i could just concentrate on driving 
and uh, I love the steering on the car. Absolutely stellar. What all modifications are there on this car other than the brakes which are from the uh, M2? Yeah, you have the M Performance brakes, you have JRZ RS1 suspension, um, remap as told previously with the, with the bigger intercooler, and for the rest it's a stock car. But uh, it has so much more handling than it has power as you mentioned, hmm. which makes it the perfect beginner car for, for the Nürburgring. Usually people come up, come here with uh, very rare to see a Lamborghini Aventador. Most of the cars here are Porsches. Yeah, Porsche and BMWs.